Okay, so when looking at setting up a grow room, uh, typically there's a lot of electricity involved around lights and fans and cooling uh, and heating and monitoring devices, so you want to be well versed in electricity basics related to that supporting that grow room. So first off, uh, basics of circuits will depend on the lights and electrical equipment chosen. They'll impact the total capacity that that room will need. Typically a 15 or 20 amp electrical circuit will be necessary for common household 120 volt systems. Keep in mind if you're buying balusters, typically the 120 volt and also the 240. If you're buying a 240 system, you want to make sure that you have the appropriate uh, connections for that. Average households run on 120. Be careful to calculate your power needs, so no circuit should run over 80% of the stated rating. So let's make it easy. If it's a 10 amp circuit, 80% of that would be 8 amps. Uh, so a 20 amp circuit would be running at no more than 16 amps. You want to have that little bit of a buffer factor there. If it's a 20 amp circuit, you don't want to run it all the way to 20 amps there. Now know what your electrical equipment draws in amps. Uh, so it's a system of measurement here. Uh, look at the labels, look at make sure your circuit boxes can handle it, make sure you're separating everything out. It's very easy to plug things in, but you've got to account for what those draw. For all your electrical components, know what it draws in amps, add these numbers up and determine the, um, that you're not overloading a circuit. Again, you keep adding something, keep adding one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. Very easy to overdraw in amps. Assume everything's going to be running at the same time to create a worst case scenario. Sometimes you may say, well, my lights are going to come off and then this is going to come on and then those are going to go off and that's going to consider a worst case scenario just in case everything does go on uh, or is on. You don't want to run into issues there. I uh, want to be plugging into uh, GFI outlets. These are ground fault interrupter uh, certified outlets, and these are typically installed where humid, high humidity conditions or where env water environment would be, such as near a sink. This means each has its own built-in breaker to cut power in the short, and they can be tested. So you see this little red dot here, or these little uh, buttons that you can push to make sure they're functional. The little light here will indicate the green light indicates it's on and functional. However, you'll also be able to note, while these are important, you should be able to have a system to check these, because they can trip unexpectedly, and so be sure to check them so you don't suddenly lose power to an outlet. Each should be this typical three-pronged um, outlet component, so that you are also accounting for the ground wire. Now, typically to these outlets, we're plugging in extension cords. So running extension cords long distance, though, is not as advised. Uh, and also, all extension cords are not considered equal. So we have a mess in this little box here. Uh, when purchasing extension cords, get the um, shortest that you need to complete the job. Don't have a bunch of um, coiled leftover extension cords. You also want to get the smallest gauge or the thickest wire possible to reduce resistance and chance of fire. Now, of course, this is going to come at increased cost, but it is well worth it. So that gauge of wire, this throws a lot of people off. The thicker the gauge, and as you can see here, the thicker the gauge, the smaller the number. So if you're buying, for example, a comparing a 14 gauge wire to a 10 gauge wire, well, that 10 gauge wire is going to be much thicker than that 14 gauge. Uh, a 21 gauge would be really, really thin here. Uh, an 8 gauge would be really thick. So again, it kind of sometimes is counterintuitive, where the smaller the number, the larger the gauge, and that will help reduce the chance of fire, reduce the heating, and allow you to be able to run longer distances if you need to, even though you want to try to keep them to a minimum.